say if I turn up Saturday and I look like a tool, think I'm going to get and I don't get it at all. Oh, well, what we could do, Darren, if it suits you, maybe just say a few words on the, on the strength of it. And if obviously if it didn't work out, then we wouldn't go with it, do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's, that's fine, that sounds. Uh, I suppose we'll just start off, first of all. Obviously, it's a huge honour for yourself and your family. I mean, you'd, I mean, it's it's captain of Kerry, of course. I mean, how do you feel about that? Um, obviously, it'd be a massive honour for myself, my family, all my friends. So as I've grown up with, obviously, it's been a, it's like a, it's a dream of mine since I was young. Like, but it's one of them things you don't expect to happen. But um, obviously, if I do get the honour to Captain Kerry... It'd be a huge thing for me, but um, it won't change my my goals that I've come come into the season with, which was to hopefully get a starting berth, as I've been trying to do for the last couple of years, and obviously retain the Munster Championship and All Ireland Championship. I don't think anything else is going to change, really. Yeah, and do you think we say, Darren? Let's say, let's say, you know, with the help of God, you know, you're you're going to nail down your position this year. Do you think you'll be able to kind of? Will you be able to? Will this be a big kind of a burden on you going forward? You know, will you will you be thinking a lot about it? Will it be kind of? Will it be a chore, or do you think it, you it, it's an easy role to fill? You know. No, I don't think I wouldn't look at it as a burden. I think it's something to be um, proud of, something that I can always look back on. But um, with the amount of leaders we have in the dressing room, I don't think there'll be too much extra responsibility on myself anyway. I think, obviously, as the years have gone by, I've learned to mature an extra bit every year, and hopefully this will bring me on another bit. And I just think um, with the amount of fellas that we have around the place, I've been learning off every captain we've had since I've been in there, so hopefully I'll be able to add another bit to it. Absolutely, yeah. And I suppose like the role models have been there. I mean, the likes of the Gooch and even Kieran Dunne, you know, in the last couple of years and all these guys. I mean, Declan Sullivan has been the greatest captain in the last couple of years. And I know, I, and I know, I suppose last year's captaincy team kind of messed around with Paul's kind of situation and all that. You know, I, you know, how do you feel about that? You know, the the whole did that kind of break up your kind of concentration during the year, the fact that Paul was captain and had to miss out because of the incident against Clare, you know, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, no, I think, um, to be honest, like the, the, uh, the thing with Paul was just, we were actually just upset for Paul and felt like it wasn't really anything, obviously it was a great opportunity that he actually ended up missing out on, but um, the way we looked at it was just like we were missing Paul and felt around the place and um, to be honest, we didn't think too much about the captaincy because in France it's a big honour, but we are the responsibility is shared around the team. Like, it's not exactly expected that the captain does everything and does all talking. It's gonna, it's always shared. The responsibility is shared around the team, so I don't think it comes into it too much. Ah, uh, yeah. And tell me, with the the new management back, is that is that a good thing or a bad thing? Are you looking forward to Jack coming back in with the new management and obviously Eamon Fitzmaurice as the new selector and Gerald Keith and that? Yeah, like I'll be back now with. Uh, about nearly two weeks, and uh, it's been very good so far. Like I think every couple of years, maybe we do need to mix it up a small bit. And obviously, we most of the lads here, we all know Jack well. Like, and uh, he's proven how good he is, same with Jer. And obviously, I've played with him, and other guys have played with him, and I never knows how um, how good him is, and how smart he is when it comes to football. He knows his stuff, and I think he's because he's not he's young enough to be playing himself. It's another way of like he's a very easy fellow to go up and talk to and just bounce ideas off. So. I'm hopeful now, especially as well with Alan Sullivan coming in as well. I've had him with under 21s. I know he's a very good trainer. But like, I think change is good every now and again. Maybe we just needed to be, um, mix it up again and not a bit. So hopefully we come back to that extra bit hungrier and a bit sharper this year. Yeah, and I suppose obviously, you know, and probably, you know, you know, it's a sensitive area with, you, with the lads because I've spoken to one or two of the lads. You now, obviously the way the, <clears throat> the year finished up last year with Pat O'Shea, obviously, you know, maybe it's a good time to change. When you, I mean, what are your views on Pat? Like, as you know, we would say with Pat's training and that, like maybe a lot of people kind of criticise the management for the final last year, you know, where do you stand on that? Um... You know, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't find anything to criticise him about. To be honest, I have an awful lot of time for Pat. Uh, I think he I, he brought my game on an awful lot. He made me more aware of weaknesses to my game, and he he helped me to improve them. People are always going to be saying to me, "Oh, you weren't starting. You must have been uh, very sour with him." But I didn't look at it like that at all. Like I had a lot of talks with Pat about it, and I have a lot of respect for Pat. He brought me on an awful lot, and you know, I'd, if if the ball had bounced another way we could have won and everyone would have been hated as a great coach it's, it's a awkward thing. question anyway Darren but I just had a list of questions here and I said I'd go with it now I suppose finally I suppose just to, to, to kind of finish off Tom O'Sullivan and Darrow O'Shea haven't committed this year yet and what are your thoughts on that are they going to come back it's not a talk that they're not what's the story with those lads are they going to come or have you any idea yet or what they're going to do and I, I, to be honest I, um, I'd be 
I'd be very hopeful that they would come back. They're two great players, two great servants to play football. They've been around a long time, a lot of mileage. But um, I still don't think there's anyone better than the two of them around to do their jobs. And uh, I'd be hopeful, like, after a couple of games break, they'll be watching us on the TV if they are watching, and they'll be only mad for action after that. But I'd be hopeful that they come back. And just on a lighter note, Darren, I, I spoke I spoke to one or two of the players, and they told me that uh, that during the course of the championship last year that you shaved your sack. <laughs> Don't forget the video for <laughs> Uh, also, there was also mentioned that that you were an awful man for eating pussy. Ah, <laughs> uh, you're some cunt. <laughs> you're actually getting me big time, you fuckers. <laughs> we're here. Um, this is Dara Shea here. This is Danny and myself are here. And we're after knocking the last fucking five or ten minutes out of you and all your cunt. This is fucking hilarious. <laughs> you, know what? you know what? When I was asked about you, I should have said you're a prick. <laughs> I was making my fucking day. I I was there, uh, and on a life note, shaver, I was just I was about to say I did last you last night. <laughs> I <laughs> you guys, I never answered my phone again. I, I'll talk to you later. Good luck. Hi, fucky.